So a lot of you guys know me as this healthy fitness trainer, but what some of you might not know is that I used to live a very unhealthy lifestyle. So I picked up a couple of healthy habits that have completely transformed my life and I'm gonna share them with you today. Scheduling, I'm probably not the most organized person, but what I have found is that you don't need to be organized in order to schedule. And for me, scheduling is simply putting it down in your calendar, especially if it's a goal that you wanna accomplish, so there's a higher chance that you're gonna complete it. I know this is gonna sound so super cheesy but I really resonate with this one quote the only difference between a dream and a goal is that goals have a deadline and it's super true because if you have a goal that you want to achieve then you have to schedule because planning is everything I'm personally a huge procrastinator and I am like such a disorganized individual so really like to schedule and to plan things in the beginning was such a chore and it is just not in my personality but what I found is that when I started to accomplish them and stick to my schedule it freed my time up to do a lot of other things you know go to meet a friend or watch a video and do something that I enjoy doing so I feel that like most people schedule their work meetings or their outings with friends but it's very rare that people actually schedule their workouts in their calendars to me working out is a priority so in my calendar I know it looks kind of crazy this is the reason why I actually have to schedule so I know exactly what to do in day everything in pink is my workout that i want to complete in that week and i just think that it's a very great way for me to be accountable to myself because i know exactly when i'm going to be working out so i don't skip my workouts despite all the craziness that goes on in the week when you actually you know put it in your calendar not only does it Firstly, make it a priority for you because health is your priority. But secondly, there's a lot higher chance that you actually do it because you know you set aside this time to committing to this. One thing I committed myself to doing when I started getting to fitness was to cut out soft drinks because soft drinks are just empty calories. They are just nutritionally bad and terrible on all fronts. And they just don't do anything for you. In the past, I used to drink soft drinks and I used to love drinking Coke because it was just like a childhood thing where like, oh, my grandparents used to spoil me by buying me coke after school so I love to have it with my meal. The turning point for me to decide not to take soft drinks anymore was because I was working out so much I became a lot more conscious on the foods that I was consuming so this led me to do research and when I found out how much sugar and artificial flavoring and chemicals that go into my coca-cola and my soft drinks I was just so put off by it and I just I just didn't want that in my body so I personally made a clear decision to go cold turkey on the soda and I haven't looked back ever since. Like the other day I read this article like how they're going to um, stop serving soft drinks in primary schools and I'm just like wow this is so good then you know like young kids won't develop sugar cravings and they won't develop this addiction because sugar really is an addiction soft drinks are an addiction and then I, I remember feeling like so happy about it and then my younger sister was like wow what a sad childhood these kids will have. <laughs> And for those of you who are addicted to your soft drinks and find it hard to kick the habit, then maybe try some, you know, carbonated tonic water because it still gives you that sparkling feeling in your mouth but just without the sugars and without the crazy chemicals that you might get in soft drinks. And for me, I just stick to plain old water which brings me to my next point. Always carry a water bottle with you. I think in general, people just don't drink enough water in a day and I think that's just because when we are so caught up in what we're doing, if we're busy or going from place to place, then drinking water is just not a habit of ours. I think that a lot of the times, people don't drink enough water simply because they don't have water on them. And for these people, when they feel the hunger pangs, it's a lot of the time because they are dehydrated rather than hungry. I used to have this client who maybe will only drink three cups of water in a day and she didn't carry a water bottle with her. She was always super dehydrated, her skin was dry, she would have really bad like dark circles and so I told her one habit that I want you to do this week is to just carry around with you a water bottle and see the difference it makes. After one week of that, like she actually lost weight just from drinking water because she felt that she wasn't overeating, she had better skin, she felt like she had more energy doing her workouts, she felt a lot stronger. So I think people really underestimate the power of water and how important it is to drink more water. I would say I personally drink at least three to four liters of water every single day. So I carry around this water bottle with me and it's almost one liter. So I just know that by the end of the day, I need to have refilled it at least twice. And you know, if you're a starter, you're not really used to bringing around a water bottle. If you can start with like a small bottle, just know that by the end of the day, you want to try your best to drink at least, you know, three or four bottles and you have refilled it about three or four times. And you know, if you've not done that, that means you're not drinking enough. So don't wait till you're thirsty to drink water. Make sure that whenever you are working or wherever you are, there's water on hand with you. 
you. So before starting this habit, my sleeping used to be very irregular. There was no set time of when I would wake up. I would just kind of sleep whenever and wake up whenever. And because my sleeping was so irregular, I just constantly felt super tired throughout my day. Even on days where I feel that I sleep the recommended 7 to 8 hours, I'd still wake up feeling totally lethargic and not refreshed at all. That really affected the way that I did my work. You know, I felt very unproductive. Interestingly enough, when I started getting into fitness, I also started to read up a lot on uh, things like motivational speaking. Something that they found uh, that a lot of these successful people or people who are top of their game in their industries do is that they wake up very early in the morning. And I was just thinking, you know, this could be like the secret sauce to their success. So I started to make it a point to wake up before 7am every single day. I just found that when I started waking up early in the morning, I experienced longer days and I had more time in the day to do more things. I had time to write my agenda for the day, go through emails, go and meal prep. So I just got into this routine that allowed me to accomplish my goals a lot faster. This was compared to last time where I would wake up like past noon and I realised that I only had a couple of hours to do my work before, you know, day like goes down and I feel very sluggish. And what I found is that waking up and going to work out in the morning just made me feel so much more energised than if I were to wake up in the afternoon and to exercise. When I work out first thing in the morning, I feel like I've accomplished something and like I'm winning at something. Even if I go through my day and it presents me with a challenge or an obstacle, I know that I have that strength to overcome it. I think one of my biggest challenges with this is actually going to sleep early the night before. There are still days where I go to bed at 2 a.m and I struggle to wake up before 7, like especially on the weekends. But I would say on a whole, during the week, it has helped me regulate my sleeping pattern by waking up early and going to bed early. And to all the evening people who are like rolling their eyes going, oh, we hate mornings, like I hate waking up in the mornings and the, the nights are just as quiet, then I totally feel you because I used to be like that. But after waking up early in the morning, I found that I'm actually more of a morning person and I thrive in the morning. So it's a really to each his own situation, but if you never try, you never know. One habit that really gave me purpose was when I started to invest in myself. What I mean by invest in yourself is to actually put in time or if you can afford it, money into things that make you happy or that can help improve yourself. It could be small things like spending money on a nice cup of coffee just to treat yourself or in my case, I personally love like relaxing massages so that's something I splurge on from time to time. But on a deeper level, it could also be investing money and time into nurturing something that can help to improve your skill set. This kind of sounds like a bit like egotistic like you're just like, oh no, I put you first before everybody and you prioritize yourself. But I think it's just very important for you to also take care of yourself before you take care of other things. Because if you don't put your well-being as a priority, then your mindset won't be in a good place whereby you can fully flourish and work at your full potential in other aspects of your life. So when I first started this fitness habit, I had to actually schedule hours in a week whereby I focus on myself and focus on the interest that was outside work and outside school. And and during that time, I remember I used to love watching YouTube videos and tutorials just to improve myself, like my knowledge on fitness and to also learn things like video editing and photography, which I was very interested in. It was really through spending a lot more time with myself and exploring new interests that I found my purpose and my passions. And that was fitness and videos. Beyond watching videos, what was the next step for me was to actually go and get certified as a personal trainer. I was also very interested in helping more girls to work out because I remember going to the gym and so many girls were asking me like, you know, are you a personal trainer? But I wasn't certified yet. So I was thinking I'd take it to the next step, invest in a personal training certification and go for the course. I was able to learn so much from that that it really expanded my knowledge and my abilities to train. And that was really how I found my passion as a personal trainer because the satisfaction of seeing all your clients transform and change just gave me so much purpose. And that's also when I decided like, hey, you know, I could combine like two interests of mine, which is video making and fitness. And that's what I did. And that's how I was able to kind of connect with more people through this platform and also through videos. Because I was working as a freelance personal trainer, I thought that was very important for me to focus on personal branding. So I wanted to create a website whereby I could put my services that I offered at people and just direct them there. And that's where I found Squarespace. And by the way, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting the show. And if you guys haven't heard of Squarespace, it's an all-in-one platform that allows you to create your own website, whether it's a blog or portfolio or even a shop. It's actually how I created my first personal website 
right? Because it was just so user friendly, especially for someone who is not the most tech savvy like myself. I kind of treated it like an online portfolio where I put bio about me, the things that I do, with the services I offer. It was also a place where I linked my YouTube videos so people could actually go and see the fitness videos that I actually created. More importantly, it was also a place where people could reach me for PT inquiries. And the best part about Squarespace is that it's super easy to use. You know, you don't have to be the most tech savvy to create a very professional looking website. All you gotta do is choose a template, drag and drop, put all the information that you want. You can even link your social media accounts, add photos, or videos, so that people can connect with you more seamlessly. If you wanna try it out, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash clicknetwork to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So yeah, I would say the time might money and effort that I put into investing myself truly paid off because it allowed me to find purpose and my passion in life. Journaling is something that I really like to do. It's a habit that I picked up over the years and it's transformed the way I manage my emotions and process my thoughts. So when I was competing in bodybuilding, I used to journal a lot because I was writing down what I was eating, what my training looked like and how I was feeling as well. And it really extended to me writing down certain observations that I was making not only about myself but the people around me and it was just a great way for me to process what was going on internally and one thing that I love journaling about was things that I felt grateful for in a day at that period when I was bodybuilding I felt uh, very emotionally and physically drained I was you know craving like the nicest foods there's a lot of days where I wake up and go like why am I even doing this the fact that I was feeling grateful for the little things in life be it my family friends observations just like writing it down and feeling very blessed for all these things just kind of cultivated a very positive mindset in me and motivated me to push even further when I was going through these grueling competitions. And that's a habit that I took on and continued with me throughout the years. Even until now, like every single day, I write down at least three things that I'm very grateful for in the day. One healthy habit that has changed my life is to eat more home prep food. On my regular days, I generally try not to eat out. I eat a lot of home cooked meals that I prep put in my lunch boxes and take out the door with me because firstly it is just the most like cost efficient secondly when you are eating food that you cook at home you can control the amount of oil and salt that goes into your meals a lot of the times when you're eating out we don't really practice portion control and everybody's body is different everybody's fitness goal is different it's not really a one size fits all when it comes to eating but what I find is that a lot of times when, when we eat out there's this tendency to because we've paid this amount of money for this amount of food you just Want to consume the whole thing but sometimes you might be overeating or under eating i stopped weighing myself every day and this was something that i personally am guilty of because the numbers on the scale was very important to me when i wanted to see progress i wanted to know that you know by the end of this week or the end of next month i wanted to drop a certain amount of weight and this is something that i see in a lot of my other clients what i found is that it's a real unhealthy obsession that a lot of people have one thing that you need to know about weight is that your weight fluctuates all the time especially for girls whether it's the time of the month or whether you've had a big meal and there's like water retention and there's a bit of bloating sometimes if you've just worked out and your muscles are inflamed you can find that your weight is actually a lot higher after you work out which is why I really don't advocate for you weighing yourself directly after a workout because chances are the number is not a good representation I much prefer tracking your progress based on how you feel as well as from progress photos or maybe how your clothes feel on you or how much more weight you can lift or just how much more energy you're experiencing that's just a much better representation of like progressing in your fitness journey rather than just a number on the scale I know I said this a lot of times in other videos but I just want to say it again because it's one of those issues that a lot of people still struggle with myself included and I think when we start to shift our focus away from just the numbers and focus more on more important things then I think that that's real progress in my opinion it might take some time for people to realize it but we're just gonna have to keep working on it that's all I have for today's episode I hope you found this video useful and I know that all habits die hard but if you just choose one or two healthy habits and stick to them I'm very sure you'll see differences in the long run and if you guys have any habits to share of your own or you know if there's some habits that you're gonna start adopting into your week then do let me know in the comment section down below I'd love to get a conversation going and if all the other videos please remember to give this one a thumbs up click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you always get a notification every single time we post a new video or you can download the click network app to get early access to our videos before they hit YouTube. So that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye!